Hello everyone, my name is Georgiana and I'm joined here with Miss Meredith from Creativity for Kids. We are going to do another rock painting but in a new kit. So Miss Meredith, go ahead and take it away. All right, I'm so happy to be with all of you today. Thank you for joining us. So as Georgiana said, today we're doing another rock painting kit and this one is called Dot a Rock, Hide and Seek dot a rock black painting. So let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, we have some awesome decals. We have our handy dandy instructions. Our social media stickers that we'll put on the back of our rock. So if people find them, they can go online and post them up on our social media accounts. We have some more transfers. We have our sponge, our brush. Well, this is our broad tip brush. We have our paint, beautiful vibrant colors. Oh, and these are our special brushes. Super duper tiny little tips on these. Okay. And then of course we have our rocks. And these rocks are directly from nature and you're given 10 really nice sized rocks. And like I said, they're directly from nature. So if you do have this kit at home, you might want to wipe them off with a wet paper towel or you can run them under some water and that'll get the dust off. Um, and if you do not have this kit at home, that's okay. All you need are some rocks, some paint, and we suggest some acrylic paint because it dries pretty nice and fast. Um, a couple brushes. And if you don't have transfers like we do, you could always use stickers. So you can join in even if you do not have this kit. So let's just put our box to the side here for inspiration and we'll get started. Okay, so put everything over here for now. So what we do not give you in the kit is water. You'll need a little thing of water for rinsing out your brushes. You'll need some paper towels, some scissors, and you might want a pencil just for um, drawing out any designs that you wanna do on your own. Okay, so getting started. As I mentioned, you wanna rinse and dry your rocks, um, cover your work surface. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm just putting down a paper towel for now. Maybe two paper towels. There we go. Okay. And we do recommend wearing either old clothes, like play clothes or a smock or something, just to protect your clothing. All right. And here's where we get to start the fun. The first step is to paint. So we recommend painting a layer of white on your rocks first. And what that does is it gives a nice base for any other color that you paint over top of it so it'll look brighter. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when you open up your paint, you might see something like a little liquid just kind of hanging out on top. Well, that's normal for paint. So we do recommend that you just mix it in. Mix, mix, mix. And that's the case for all of the paints. So you just wanna mix all that in. And I think I'm gonna paint all of our rocks at one time with the white, just so they can start drying. Now this white base, or all the paint actually dries very quickly which I kind of love about acrylic paint and this paint in particular. 
Now, while you're painting your rocks, you might want to start looking at each shape because oftentimes the shape of the rock will help you think of what you'd like to paint on the rock. Now with this kit in particular, um, we're encouraging creating images using dots. And it's super fun and it looks really cool. And I'll hold up some of the samples that you can kind of see laying around here. Um, you can see what I mean with making images out of dots. So one of our transfer sheets actually has little designs on it made out of dots. And you can put those directly on your rocks and then just paint right over them. So, but if you don't have this kit and you don't have those transfers, it's okay. I'm gonna show you how to do some designs um, just freehand as well. So you don't need those transfers. And since it is October and it's the season of fall, I'm gonna try and maybe do a, a pumpkin, maybe create a pumpkin with dots, but also do a design on a little mini pumpkin. So hopefully we have enough time to do that. All right, so after you're done painting all of your rocks white, like I'm doing, uh, or after you're done painting with any color at all, we suggest that you rinse out your brush with water and dry it. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I have another paper towel over here to dry it. So now while that paint is drying on our rocks, I'm going to show you some of our designs. So here we have a butterfly and you can see, I'll show you the design here. This butterfly, we cut it out and we transferred it onto the rock. And then with our cool little detail brush, you can add little dots of paint over top of your transfer. So we'll be doing that after we add some color to these racks. So, Georgiana, I'm wondering, have you painted rocks before? I love to paint rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and have you tried our dot a rock painting kit? Not yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I love polka dots. <laughs> oh, cool. Now, of the rocks that you have painted, where have you hid them? Or so, have you just gifted them to people? I actually, the one that I'm most proud of, um, I did the veterans class okay. and I did patriotic rocks. Okay. And then I have a veteran hospital actually down the street from me. So okay. I laid that in their landscape. So when people are in and out of the doctors, they can see my patriotic rocks. Oh my gosh, that is a great idea. That is so sweet and that's so thoughtful of you. Thank you. Yay, Georgiana. Yeah. How about you, Merida? Well, I love hiking and going out in nature and just hanging out in the nice weather. So like last night, I went on a walk specifically at seven o'clock so I could see the sun go down um, out over in a park across the street from where I live. And so I brought a rack with me and I was able to hide it um, within the trees, but easy enough for people to find. So I really like hiding racks that I paint out in nature. So that's my favorite. And if you're watching along, what I'm doing, as I mentioned before, um, you wanna mix all your paint so um, there isn't any like watery stuff at the top. 
And I should mention um, our rock paint, our paint here, it is weather proof. So if it does rain, your um, the paint won't slide off. So if you use possibly a different type of acrylic paint and you don't coat it with like a clear coat, it might start chipping away or something. But this paint, it actually has that, um, that chemical in it to keep it from coming off. Kind of like nail polish, but it's not as permanent as nail polish. So, and it doesn't have that odor, <laughs> which is good. So we're all, okay, we're all mixed up. So let's see, I would love to know, and Georgiana, maybe you could help me out. If our friends out there has a suggestion as to which one of these transfers we should transfer onto a rock first. And um, if you have a suggestion, go ahead and I think you can just type it in to the Q&A or into the chat. Is that right, Georgiana? You are correct. And we have okay, cool. already a vote for the heart. Oh, yeah. All right. So since we're going to do a heart, I'm going to um, paint one of these rocks with a different colored background than white. So I think we'll do a yellow background. All right. And when you are deciding which rock to put your transfer on, it's actually best to do this type of thing. You wanna cut out your transfer. And when you're cutting out your transfer, you'll notice there's a clear sheet that's on top of it. And you do, you wanna keep that sheet on there. So when you're choosing which rock to put your transfer on, you just wanna make sure the rock is big enough for the transfer. So like this rock might be a little too small for this transfer. So we're not gonna use this rock. But this rock, it's kind of shaped similar to the transfer. So I think that's a really good fit. So I'm gonna use this rock and paint it yellow for the background. I'll move these guys out of the way. They're all dry, but we'll get this guy all nice and yellow. So as I mentioned, October is in the month of autumn. And at the end of October is one of my favorite holidays ever, which is Halloween. So I'm wondering what everyone is going to dress up like for Halloween, if you're going to dress up for Halloween. So if you're dressing up for Halloween, I would love to know, what are you dressing up like? And Georgiana, if you're dressing up for Halloween, I would love to know what you're dressing up like. I haven't thought of mine this year, but last year when I had my really long red hair, I dressed up as Jessie from Toy Story. Aww. <laughs> and that was probably one of my best costumes. <laughs> that is super cute. Meredith, have you decided what you're going to dress up as? I always like dressing up like something creative. Um, I wanted to dress up like, well, one year I dressed up like the wind and that was super fun. <laughs> so actually I dressed up as a windy day. So I took an umbrella and I turned it inside out. So it looked like the wind had blown it inside out. And then I kind of messed up my hair and and sprayed it with hairspray so it looked like the wind had taken it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so I just walked around <laughs> as if it was a very, very windy day. <laughs> that is one creative costume. <laughs> <laughs> but I have not, I haven't um, figured out what I want to dress up for Halloween yet for this year though. How about any of our friends? Are any of our friends, um, telling you what they're dressing up like? 
We have not any costume suggestions, but somebody wants to see you make a turkey oh. <laughs> out of dots on a rock. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll prep this one for the turkey. And I think a lovely turkey background might be um, hmm, light blue. So while I'm waiting for our yellow rock and our pink rock to dry, I'm going to make a light blue. And how you make light blue or how you lighten up any color when you are painting is by adding white to it. So I'll take another little paper towel here and create something of a palette, like a little paint palette. So when you're lightening up a color, you'll take white and you always want to start with white first and add the darker color into it. So I have a blob of white here, and now maybe just a tad of blue, like this much blue, and then I'll just mix it into the white. So you can kind of see the color I'm getting here. Very, very light blue. So I think I wanna add a little bit more blue to it. I'll just dab my brush in there and mix it around. And we've got a little bit of a darker blue. And I think that's lovely. So, wow, what a suggestion. I love it. That's a challenge. I'll have to draw it out before I do it. I think I might need a little bit more blue in here. So I don't know if you noticed, I painted the light blue that I had mixed onto the rock. And I thought, mm, I need a little bit more blue. So I went ahead and while the paint is still wet, you can just add paint into it and darken it up. This is actually also the way you do a sunset look or an ombre look where you're going from a dark color to a light color. Maybe I'll show you how to do that. So right now the whole rock is this light blue. Well, if I wanted it to be more of an ombre, I would take, or like a gradient, some people call it a gradient. Um, I'm gonna take more blue and just paint it on half the rock like this. So you can see down here it's darker, up here it's lighter. And I just finish it up like that. And then I'm just going to kind of brush into the middle to kind of connect the top and the bottom part of the rock. So up here it's nice and light. In here it's more medium. And then down here it's dark. So that creates an ombre effect, which is very good for, like I said, sunsets. If you want to add like three colors, um, all you have to do is mix the color into the color that's still wet. And it, it's easy to blend colors that way. All right, let's see, is our yellow dry? Our yellow is dry. Just another little tip when you're not using your paints, we do recommend closing up the tops of them so you don't accidentally spill them or you know forget to close them and then they dry out. All right, so when we're using our transfer, as I mentioned, there's a little protective sheet on top. So you just want to remove that protective sheet. And then you're going to put your transfer face down onto the rack. And it should stick a little bit so it'll stay in place. And then you're gonna find your sponge and get it a little bit wet. I'll bring that into the camera a little bit more. And kind of just dab the transfer so it gets somewhat wet. You don't really need it dripping wet. And that's why I'm saying to dab it. You just want it wet enough so that the transfer, the artwork, actually sticks onto the rock and releases from the paper. So 
So this happens pretty quickly. And you can kind of see when you're doing it, you can kind of see the image start to pull away. And in our instructions, we actually say to kind of peek a little bit from the side, if you can see the transfer sticking. And I don't see it sticking right there, but maybe over here. Is it sticking? Oh, it's starting to release. All right. I'm going to add just a little bit more water over here. And hope that helps it stick. And just pull it up. Here it comes. The big reveal. Ta-da! Hey, what a wonderful suggestion that was from our friend out there to do a heart. I do absolutely love it. And if any of your transfer um, is a little bit wrinkled, you can use your itty bitty little um, brush and just kind of push it down like that. Just push down the edges so it stays on. Or if you see any little air bubbles, because rocks have all these little creases and crevices, you can use this little tool to push your transfer down. And that will help it be nice and flat on your rack. So while we um, let this one dry a little bit, does anyone have a suggestion for the pink rock as to what transfer we should do on the pink rock? Here's all my um, transfers if you'd like to choose. All right, friends out there, what do you think? Here's our pink rock. We have two suggestions for the ladybugs. Oh, <laughs> love it. All right, so we'll cut out our ladybug. And just like what we did for our heart, we take off the little clear protective sheet. We put it face down. Now, how do we want our ladybug to sit? Maybe like this, like she's crawling kind of at an angle upward. There we go. Then we push it down. And then we get some water on our sponge. Good, 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 good. Let it soak in there for a little bit. And these transfers, if you've ever played with a fake tattoo before, these are similar to those. So those work in a similar way. All right, let's check. Are you sticking there yet? Oh, you are starting to stick. I've had it happen where sometimes I put maybe a little too much water on it. And this paper, this white paper just slides right off. So here's our cute little ladybug. Hi, ladybug. And I do see a little extra water on there, so I'm going to just kind of dab it away. Perfect. Great suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for your suggestion. Okay, and we'll let our ombre, our blue ombre rock dry over there. We're done with our sponge for right now, so we can squeeze it out and put it to the side. And we don't really need our broad brush right now because we're going to do some detail work in these. So I'll put that to the side and we're going to use our cute little detail brush. So now is the really fun part where you get to um, 
you get to choose whatever colors that you want to kind of fill in the dots. And you don't have to fill them in all the way. So for example, the flower that I did here, you can still see some of the black dot of the transfer around the dot that I placed. So let's start with some orange. I think orange would be really cool. And maybe I'm thinking orange because um, of Halloween. <laughs> so you just put a dot and I'll hold it up so you can see. You just gather some paint on your little paintbrush and you just add a dot. And that is exactly how you dot a rock. And it's it goes really quickly and it's super easy to do. And it can be very relaxing. And you can get a couple dots out of one dip at a time depending on what size dot you're making. So this is super fun. And I love the fact that all of these transfers are kind of like little guides for you to create these designs out of dots. And for the bigger dots, all you do is push down a little bit more and that creates a larger dot. And if you don't push down as much, it creates a smaller dot. And when you do the larger dots, you can wait until they dry and then you can add another color over top of it. So you can layer your dots if you want. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love it. It's kind of like a heart-shaped pumpkin. Kind of. If I were to add a little green stem. I'm going to add a little green stem. Okay. So not only is this cute little paintbrush good for dotting, but you can rinse it out and you can use it to add things like a little green stem. So then we're creating a cute little pumpkin out of this sweet heart that we just dotted. So here's our little pumpkin stem. And now we have a heart shaped pumpkin data rack. So after this one dries, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe white or yellow dots on top of some of the larger dots. All right, friends out there, what color should I dot our ladybug? We already have a suggestion for red and white. Ooh, okay. So our color palette, we don't have red. We do have white. We have purple, yellow, green, blue, orange. So orange is kind of close to red. But let me try something. And this is something I don't know if I've tried before. I'm going to mix the orange and the pink and see if something of a red. They're both similar tones. So I'm just gonna grab a blob of the orange and grab a blob of the pink, mix it together and see what that makes. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like a really warm coral color. So that's kind of close to the red. What do you think? Should we go for that? I think that's a beautiful color. Yeah, me too. Okay, we'll use that. So also when you're mixing paint, and this is something that professional artists already know, 
But when you're mixing a new color, you want to mix enough of it so you don't run out because oftentimes it's hard to make the same color twice. Oh, we'll close up our paints here. All right, so maybe I have a feeling, our friend out there, maybe you were thinking we paint around the dots with red and then we add white dots to the black dots. I wonder, what do you think? Or should we just dot it with red? Any thoughts, Georgiana? I would like to see how it would look filled and then dotted. Ooh, okay. I'll just add these teeny tiny little dots around the black dots using this color. Do, 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 do. A lot of experimenting today. I love it. I always like trying new things when it comes to our art materials and our kits. And often it's our friends out there who create these wonderful ideas and these challenges, such as a turkey made out of dots. So we'll do that one next. And I'll mention, we do have these beautiful sparkly gold transfers in our kit. Um, so I'll show those to you. And I don't know if we'll have enough time to do one, but they work exactly the same as our black transfers. Oh, this is turning out really cute. Our friend out there had a great suggestion with the red and the white. Mm -hmm. I think there was a movie out a couple years ago called The Ladybugs, and it was about a soccer team. Did you ever see that movie? I have not, but a lot of people are complimenting you on your rocks. Oh, yay! <laughs> Do people have a favorite rock that they see? I wonder. All Maybe right. once we're all done, they can choose which one's their favorite. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Okay, that was cool. So we filled in with our corally red color. And now I'll move on to our white. And I'm just going to dot right over the black dots with the white. There we go. That's looking really cool. Ooh, it's striking. That white is really popping off the black. This is looking really cool. I think I've seen people dress up for Halloween as ladybugs. All right. And I think I want to put maybe a little eyeball here and a little eyeball there. Hello, there, you're so cute. <laughs> okay, cute little ladybug coming through. Very sweet. And I think it would be also super duper cute to put some polka dots around the rock. So I'm gonna put some yellow and green polka dots around the rock. And I wanna just mention when you are using these teeny tiny little brushes, um, it's important to dry them off completely before you use them um, with, with the paint because if they're not dried off completely, water might um, come out onto your rock and that might mess up your paint a little bit. So it might not be a perfect duct if there's water a little bit too much water in there. Okay, so yellow.
And what I'm doing, I'm creating larger dots just by kind of making a little circle with the tool. So you can make different size dots with this cute little paintbrush. Wow, this is like super duper sweet. Yeah. And I'll let those dry. And then once those dry, I think I'll go back in. Here, I'll hold it up. And then put green on top. But polka dot um, ladybug is awesome. Love it. So we'll let you dry over here. Okay, so to make a turkey, I might have to look at a picture or maybe I'll just draw a turkey from my mind. And if you don't wanna do a turkey, that's okay. You can do whatever you want. But I do suggest drawing out what you'd like to create on your rock first. So my turkey is gonna start with a circle for a head and then a a long teardrop shape for the body. And then something of like a half circle to create the fan of feathers that create the turkey tail. And then we'll put the beak in, the cute little eyes, and then we'll see what other details come after that. But we'll have to kind of make the feathers like this come out. So I'll go ahead and draw it on our rack. Let's see if it's fully dry. Yeah, it's pretty dry. So we'll do, maybe I should do it. Uh, maybe I should do it like, no, I'll do it like this. Okay, our head. Now I can see this, but you probably can't because it doesn't show up that well on a painted rock since it's pencil. And then our fan of feathers. Now I've never done this, so, <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how it does turn out. Okay, what color? I think we'll do the turkey head and body um, orange. So maybe, let's see, how did we do other little butterflies and insects? Oh, okay, so I'm gonna make a dot for the body, like a big, or a dot for the head, like a big dot. Okay, then I'm going to make a small dot, a medium dot, and a large dot to represent our little turkey body. Let's see if you can see that a little bit better. There you go. And then I'm gonna use a different color. Maybe I'll use white first to do all the dots of our feathers coming out. And why I'm gonna do white is to create a little bit of a base. So the yellow, like when I paint yellow on it, it will um, show up better. So that'll be one feather. This will be another feather. <laughs> 
Georgiana, how do you think this is going to turn out? I think this is going to turn out great. You are already impressing me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I like your confidence and positivity. That's awesome. And we're kind of, we're going to want to try and do exactly the same on this side that we did on this side. Let's see if I should do maybe a couple more like that. <laughs> and I would love to see anyone else who's out there any of our friends out there, if you're also creating a little turkey, please have a older friend or your parent or guardian take a picture of it and post it up on either Michael's social media or our social media. But I would love, love, love to see what you create because this is such a fun little challenge. So, and actually, if you're doing any rack painting using data rack or dotting racks as you're painting, I would love to see what that looks like. So our hashtag is creativity for kids. If you want to put it up on our social media. Okay, so there, <laughs> that's our turkey for right now. Now I'm going to let it dry because as you put a lot of paint in one little area, it takes a little bit more time to dry. So we'll come back to this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and try something that also I've never tried before. And I mentioned it to you earlier. So this is one of those cute little pumpkins that you can find at the grocery store or at your farmer's market, or maybe you've even grown one in your yard like I grew this one. Um, And we're gonna go ahead and do a little Dada jack-o'-lantern face on this guy. So I think the blue might show up best. And what I'm gonna do is draw it out. So I'm gonna do a triangle as an eye and another triangle as an eye, and then maybe just a cute little smile instead of the jagged tooth. Oh, and a nose. We need a a little heart-shaped nose, I think. So we're going to dot a pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. Now, I don't know how this paint reacts on pumpkins, or leaves or anything else you might find out in nature. So we're gonna we're gonna figure it out right now. I mean on rocks it's one thing because a rock is nice and hard. I think it's gonna work. Alrighty, just one dot on there and I think it's gonna work. So I'll just do that 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 in a triangle. <laughs> This is so cool. Like I said, I love trying new things with our kits with you guys. Here's that one. That, 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 that. I definitely have seen people decorate pumpkins with polka dots all over them, and they look really cool. But this is totally different than that. Oh, we have our eyes. So cute. I love this. All right. Georgiana, are you just dying as well with how cute this is? I absolutely love it. (laughs) Did you you say that you grew this pumpkin yourself? Yeah, I did. It was so random. (laughs) I had put up, I must have put pumpkin in our compost last year. And then during the summer, this gigantic vine started growing out of our compost. And then all these sweet little pumpkins started growing off of the vine. And now we have about 
seven little mini pumpkins that grew. You are just so talented, Meredith. <laughs> this. Well, this is super easy to do. All of our friends out there can do this. This is super duper cute. Okay. So you could um, you could add dots inside, or maybe you even want to do a different little face on the other side. But for now, I'm just going to leave this one as is. Yeah. All right. We'll put that aside for now. That was very exciting. Okay, and we'll come back to our turkey now. So the other thing that works really well are um, for small little details are permanent markers. So if you need to need to add like the little beak in here um, or like little eyes, you could always use a permanent marker and just add in details like that. But I'm going to add some color to our feathers now. So I'm going to use yellow and just start dotting that, that, that. And maybe I'll do a little bit of a mix of yellow and orange, or maybe I'll just keep going yellow. I think I'll keep going yellow and see how it looks and then decide if I want to do a different color or not. Sometimes you just have to feel it out. You can't really make all the decisions before you start doing it. You just got to see where it's going and then make your decisions for colors or for your designs. All right, so how are our friends doing out there? Do we have any questions from our friends? No questions. We are just amazed. Okay, <laughs> uh, this has been an amazing class. I do love the rock painting classes. So we have somewhat of a turkey going on here. Um, I am going to give it cute little legs right now. Hello, cute little leg number one. Cute little leg number two. And this one's going to have a yellow beak because I made its head orange. So I'm just going to do a little upside down triangle to represent its beak. Hello, welcome to the world. And probably blue eyes because that's the darkest color I have. We do have a little over 10 minutes, I think. Um, is that right? You still have a little bit of time? Yep. Okay. So I do have some rocks that I've already painted that I can show you how to do the foil transfer on one of those. So you can see what that looks like. But we'll do a little eyeball. On our turkey friend. Ooh, I wonder, do our friends out there have a suggestion for what our little turkey's name should be? If you have a thought as to what I should name my turkey, please go ahead and write it into Georgiana and she can tell me and then we can name our turkey. And in the meantime, I'm going to add some grass down here so our turkey looks like um, he's playing out in a field of grass. Hey. We have two suggestions. Oh, more and more coming in. We have Peter, <laughs> Gobble Bobble, <laughs> <laughs> Bob or Bobby, <laughs> Maddie. Oh, wow. I'll keep you posted if there's any more. <laughs> All right. Well, Georgiana, I think I'm going to have to rely on, on your vote. What, what should we call our turkey? I, I think like Peter is a good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Peter the turkey. We have somebody who suggested Dottie. 
Daddy. <laughs> oh, that's a cute name too and very appropriate. Love it. And here's with the grass. So now we've created a little bit more of a scene. And then right up here, I think we could put a sunshine. So I'm going to do that too. So Peter slash Dotty. That's what we call, we're calling our turkey, right, Peter? Yeah, I like both. Maybe okay. Peter nickname Dotty. <laughs> <laughs> or is Dotty the, the middle name? <laughs> oh, good idea. <laughs> Dotty's the middle name. Ooh, we could actually dot, I could have dotted the sunshine. Well, I still can. I can add dots in orange to the sunshine. But for now, I'll just do sun rays with the tip of my brush like this. Yay! Uh, what a fun little scene. And that's all because our friends out there suggested that we do a fun little turkey. Yay! Uh, all right, we'll put you aside to try. Now, um, like I mentioned, we have these gorgeous golden foil transfers. And I've already painted a couple different racks with um, some fun backgrounds. So this one I did kind of like a tie dye. This one I did kind of just swirly and squiggly and just very abstract. And this one I did orange, of course, because I was thinking of pumpkins. So friends out there, which one of these should we do on our rock? What are you going to vote for? We have a heart. We have, we'll call this a flower design. We have our rainbow or we have our butterfly. Which one should we do? We had a suggestion for the rainbow and the flower. Oh, okay. Well, so I you're think the we'll deciding do... factor. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the rainbow. And where should we put the rainbow? I think the rainbow will look really cool on this one. So we'll have it sideways and put the rainbow on that one. Thank you, friends, for voting or for giving me your opinion. And thank you for doing that all class long. It makes it so fun when I know you guys um, are excited, are as excited as I am to do these crafts. So here we go. All right, just like what we did with the other transfers, you take the protective sheet off, you put it face, do it this way, face down on your rack, Kind of push it down because it's sticky. And we're going to take our paintbrush out of the water because you don't really want to leave paintbrushes in the water. <laughs> and we'll wet our sponge. Here we go. And wet our rack or wet our transfer. Just by dabbing it, dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And you have to wait like about a minute for it to actually start transferring over. And kind of, you can kind of peek. Nope, we're not ready yet. Just add a little bit more water, let it soak in. And I think what's going on when we do this is the water is helping the transfer somehow release from the white paper. It's very magical. I really don't know exactly how it works, but I love that it does. So let's take another little peek. Oh yeah, it's definitely working. Yay! Oh, oh that is really cool. So because of the design I had on there, it's almost like a sun ray instead of a um, rainbow. So we have this beautiful golden sunburst. 
coming out of this rack. I love it. Cool. So just like what we did with our black, um, with our black transfers, you can use your little baby pink brush and add dots to this design as well. So I am going to show you just real quickly before we leave here, because we only have a couple more minutes. These are the stickers I had mentioned before for our social media. And if you do plan on gifting your rocks or leaving them out for other people to find, all you do is you put this sticker on the back of the rack. And then it says our little social media post, which is hashtag creativity for kids. So when they find the rack, they can go on our social media accounts and post it and see what other racks people have found. So this has been super duper fun. I am in love with all of the racks that we did today. And I'm so happy that all of you could join us. So if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll say goodbye for today. Any more questions? We do have a question on where you're going to put the ones you made today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to put the one that looks like a little pumpkin out on my front porch. So when trick-or-treaters come, they can see this and probably bring them a little bit of joy um, for Halloween. So that was a great question. Thank you for asking. And thank you for joining me, all you friends out there. I look forward to the next time. Bye-bye.